Namaste and welcome to Youth TV Show Season 7. In today's episode, we will be discussing on the topic, what makes it and what makes it not, a teenage girl to a young women leader. To discuss on this issue, we have with us the President of Leadership Academy, Mr. Santosh Shah. When we decided to mentor high school students, in trying to see if they could get interested in national affairs, international affairs, uh, focus more on the creative writing. What I and some of my interns did is we went to different schools and colleges, gave classes in high school, like whichever uh, sections we got to talk to, and we encouraged uh, students to join us. And uh, the whole idea was that we would create young leaders not just in politics, but in different sectors, that they would start to begin thinking creatively and actually believe that they could have ideas and people will listen to their ideas. So when we did that, we got about 80% boys and 20% girls. This is 2002, 2003. And in the interactions, you could even see in some of our photographs, the girls would be in one corner and it was always the boys who talked. So as the coordinator, I had to make effort to tell girls, please speak. And whereas the boys were very welcoming because that's how they were trained in youth forum, that they should encourage others to speak who normally does not speak in a forum like that. It's very difficult to make girls speak because the idea was also not to embarrass them if they didn't want to speak, not to force them to speak. In 2008, when I handed over my mentorship or conducting leadership classes to a young team that I had mentored since 2002 and 2003, I realized that we had 80% girls and 20% boys, not just participating, but also taking the leadership roles in running the office, running the programs, you know, taking lead in the society, and some of them were even taking projects on a national level also working with international partners. So in 2008, I told myself, what made that happen? What made teenage girls, whom I trained in 2002 and 3, become young women leaders by 2008, which I didn't think that way, that they are going to become so successful. That's a topic I would like to discuss about. Do you think in a male-dominated society, if a man tries to promote gender equality, that uh, can he be viewed as less competent or less capable by his peers if, uh, if he does something that empowers uh, women leaders? What is your take on this? That's the absolute reality of Kathmandu society. I wouldn't say Nepali society, but this one capital is if you try to advocate women in leadership, you consider as a weakling or as a, you know, there's something wrong with your head, right? I do that, but fortunately nobody has been able to say that, say that to me on my face. Maybe they do that behind my back. But I think that's not a weak thing. That's the right thing to do. Mm. Right? 50% of our family members, most of the time, are female. 51% of our national population are female. So we should not only encourage teenage girls to become young women leader, but we should also respect their position wholeheartedly when they become one and protect that because it's a rare thing. There's a World Wildlife Fund. What it does is it protects endangered animals, not common animals. So when something becomes endangered, it becomes valuable. So right now what happens is very rare for a young girl to become a leader or take a leadership position. And even among them, it's extremely rare to have somebody who sustains that. For somebody who has mentored so many young girls to become leaders, and for some reasons I have, you know, they have not been able to make through, it's very painful for me as their mentor. In boys' cases, most of the time, it's not been that scenario. So for me, I've gone through that pain. I've gone through that sense of, uh, you know, hopelessness many times. So for me, it's very important to see that when they have a leadership position, they're protected, you know, they're encouraged. There's a bit of positive bias, which is fine. 
but it's true a lot of the time men does not want to take orders from or, or follow or accept that because of the peer pressure but as i say it's not it's not a weak thing to do it's not a wrong thing to do it is the right thing to do and it's a very strong thing to do because if it was wrong you know i go to different public gatherings people would have come up to me and said said that you know when i have guided uh, young girls to become young women leaders i have seen how their family perception has changed towards me you know i have changed actually sometimes i go visit them you know there is a different the happiness level or the pride factor is very different than it was the same parents who used to be worried about the girl traveling or you know take participating in public programs are now like doing research for them what better they can do you know their whole so it's not just one person life it's the life of their entire family you know and it's also the impact that they make for example we have a few a female leadership program trainers when they train girls and when i train girls it's it's a huge difference because when they train they are more closer in the age to the young girls whom we train and the young girls look at them and say maybe in 2 years i could become that right that much of a living example when they see when they see these examples you know it creates hope in them rather than they seeing one of their cousin sister or aunt you know not making it through and saying okay you know this is my future too i should not venture a lot i should not make a lot of effort because it's not going to work out that i'll be successful or i'll be a young woman leader but when they see you know young women trainers leaders it kind of brings that hope in them and when they are hopeful they think when they think they make effort when they make effort the work happens and the work happens it's seen and the work of leadership is seen you are considered as a as a young woman leader it's great thing for boys to support the female members in their family if they want to take a leadership position now somebody might not want to take a leadership position so we should have them give them their own freedom it maybe some of you or most of you don't want to but the factor should not be because it was male dominated it was uh, you know you didn't have a support you didn't have a godfather your family is not into politics you know your family doesn't have enough money to support your you know leadership programs this should not be the factor the factor should be that you know what it means to be a young women leader when i was doing my a levels i had some new friends and they were from uh, an all girls school so i found there was a vast difference in their personalities and in ours they were more stronger more expressive and they um, and we were we held back a lot i think we were in some ways uh, softer than they were and you know where, and because i'm uh, an aspiring engineer so i want to go to a place where um, you know subjects like maths and physics are not very male dominated and that's why i'm also looking into all uh, women colleges because i think that will help me so do you think uh, as a teenage girl from being a teenager to um, a women leader do you think being in an all girls school or being in an all women's college will help them better or do you think it will create an even bigger barrier in the way they think and men think what happens when you are in all girls school what is absent over there men so this thought in our society that we are a male dominated society and men are superior doesn't exist when you are in an all girls school or all girls college which means few girls among the class are expected to take leadership positions like class monitor or president of the club and they are competing with other other females or other girls in the school so that sense of competitiveness you know the necessity to become a leader or wanting to be a leader is very high now whereas in a coed in a society like ours it may be that the boys have taken the lead and the girls have just given up and they just follow now if you want to go to all girls college and think that that you have a better chance i think it's a great idea because you went to a coed school so you know what it looks like had you gone to all girls school and now you want to all go to all girls college i would say maybe it's not a great idea i think it's a good idea to see what a coed school or college looks like the whole idea is that you should not become permanently pessimist 
that you don't have a chance as a young girl or teenage girl to become a young woman leader. That can happen even if you go to all girls school. You don't participate in anything, you don't have any leadership position, nobody thinks you have a chance. And actually the chance for a young girl to become pessimist in all girls school is even higher than a co-ed school. Because in the co-ed school, or because the men took over, that concept kind of makes you feel that maybe you still have a chance. But if you go to all girls school and you see some girls always succeeding and you always failing, and you go like, okay, if the girls, if the girls are winning, you know, I have no chance if I have to compete with boys. As long as you have that flickering flame alive, you have a chance. And as a girl, it's, I think it's a great idea to go to co-ed at some point, at uh, all girls school or college at, at some point. It's a good combination to, to have. Many men uh, claim that women are not commanding enough and that is the reason why they are not in various leadership positions. Do you think that teenage women need to be more commanding or between to be more aggressive? Or do you, and do you think that this claim is true? If most men think that women are not very expressive and, it, and that is what limits them getting into a position of leadership, I would say maybe it's true. They're not expressive enough. Maybe among girls they are. But when it comes to taking a lead, Maybe they're not expressive enough, they do not explain that much. And a lot of that comes from lack of confidence. You know, some do, we have seen women leaders already in a position, they do that. They express, they talk, they're the great leaders. But for a teenage girl who's not a leader yet, maybe that sense of expressiveness is lacking. They listen and they probably agree or disagree, but they don't express. Now, to be aggressive and be a leader, maybe you don't need to be aggressive at all to be a leader. Like, for example, I hold many leadership positions. I'm not aggressive at all. And when I used to be aggressive, I was not leader at all. So I personally do not see a correlation between being aggressive and being a leader. I rather think one has to be more solid, more grounded to be a leader than to be aggressive. Second word you use was command. Yes, you need to have a command to be a leader. Now, command does not come from you. Command has to come from the people who follow you. You may shout out aloud, you may put 20,000 rules, you may hammer rules, you know, like a nail into people's head, and maybe nobody listens to you. Nobody, and even if they do, they don't like what you have said. And even if they follow, they're not doing it wholeheartedly. So it's not, most of the time, it's not for the leader to command. It's for the followers to feel commanded. You know, sometimes I send text to 20 people for something. And out of them, 18 responds and they are there. It's just a text, two-line text. You know, can you be here on this particular date and time and venue? We need you. They don't even ask why. You know, what they are supposed to do. They just follow it. Just a text, incomplete text without much information and people do, do follow. Sometimes people campaign for big protests and they expect 5,000 people to come when 20 people turn up. Right? So command is a very, it's not an easy word. Today you have a great command when you are a guerrilla leader in a civil war. You know, half the country follows you or hates you or loves you. And then you become prime minister, nobody even watches your speech anymore. Right? So command is a very interesting, you know, you're still as fiery in your speech as used used to be 10 years ago you know as a civil war leader you know from from the rebel side and now you are in the government and nobody listens to you although you're giving the similar speech so command is a very it's a very tricky word and it does not only apply to the women it also applies to the men right but uh, again as i said uh, what Bina might be trying to say is maybe women are not expressive enough and maybe that is a hindrance and uh, that is true for men and women both. Is to be a leader, you have to be expressive, right? Sometimes we have leaders who just throws rules and instructions, and that's a very robotic leadership. So for a, because the topic is can teenage girl become a young woman leader or not? And one of the component you need to become a leader as a teenager is you need to begin expressing. 
to people other than your close circuit of friends. They may agree, they may disagree, they may like, they may dislike, they may laugh at it, they may get convinced, but you need to start that somewhere. You know, if you are hesitant to talk to the five people in your classroom, you know, think of it this way. They're not going to be with, their, with you for your entire life. The school is going to be over at some point. The class you're studying in is going to complete in six months or a year. You probably take different course in life and you don't have to look at each other again. Right? But you got to try that somewhere. You know? And then again, maybe it's like an advertising, but that is why we have youth forum where we bring people for eight Saturdays and you are made to express. And if you don't like each other, you don't have to see after the eighth class. <laughs> right? But you did try to express yourself and experiment with it. With it. We are made to believe that at, until the age of 18, you never participated in a debate competition. That means you're never going to debate. That's not really true. That you should never stop believing in learning new things. There's no age barrier to that. The first thing that I think is, for many people, the definition of success varies. From person to person, somebody considers being a leader as one of the ways to become successful. Somebody do not think that way. The definition of success does vary and what I think is some people, they are more comfortable following orders. They are not somebody who like to take the initiative for it because they feel more responsible towards the decisions they've made. So sometimes, or let's just say most of the times, there can be only one leader and many followers. So most of the times what people believe is instead of leading other people and showing them the direction they would rather go in the direction that somebody else has shown to them because that is way more easier and that is something they would want to pursue in their lives. That's absolutely true in most cases around the world is a lot of people probably find it comfortable to follow a leader, hopefully a good leader. And it's absolutely fine to be a good follower because that's what makes somebody a good leader. But now again the question is how do you find a good leader? Because you might be an absolutely nice person, but doing horrible things, thinking you're doing a great thing because you're following a wrong leader. But you don't know that person is a wrong leader. Does that happen? Yes. It happens a lot. The other thing Asma said is very significant, and that is comfort zone. Most of the time, a teenage girl does not think that she is a young woman leader material or she has what it takes to be a young woman leader is because they don't want to leave their comfort zone. Set routine, fixed entertainment, a group of friends, same talks, everything is fine. They have a set timeline. I'm going to finish my SLC, high school, college, probably go to abroad for college come back, get a job, get married, you know, everything doesn't work out like that. But it's a comfort planning. It's, it's very comforting to think I'm going to do this. Rather than having no idea, I'm going to be a leader, I have no idea what, how things are going to work out. Right? Maybe it's more comfortable to be a leader. And you become this, you know, political leader, you, you maybe because now there is more encouragement towards having female Politicians, you become a minister, you have somebody driving your car, you have somebody taking your security, somebody cooking food for you, you have to go to meetings, you're seen on the TV. I think it could, it could sound like a comfortable life. You don't have to worry about money or legalities as long as you're not corrupt. Maybe it's comfortable, but people don't see that as a comfort zone. You see comfort zone as having your daily routine and fixed people. And maybe people don't want to move out of that. So the pressure is not there and the, nothing instigates you to make effort to be a young leader. Thank you very much, Mr. Santosh Shah, for sharing your insights on the topic and answering our questions. The students who are SLC appeared are studying in grade 11, 12 or bachelor's level and wish to participate in our leadership development program, Youth Forum, held every Saturday between 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. Give us a call at 01422 0459. Our email address is santoshafoundation at gmail.com. We will be back with a new episode of Youth TV Show next week. Namaste.